before we get started, just make sure that you guys either sign in with this QR code or the link in the description. All you have to do is sign in with that link and it lets us know it goes through our referral. So it just basically adds another person that's done it through a referral. It really helps the club and our school. So uh, please do that. Thank you. Also, guys, just a reminder that the IBMZ online career fairs are going to be coming up soon. Uh, we have the dates on screen. And um, if you're a Western student, it's going to be April 12th. And just know that you need to get your Explorer badge, uh, just the concepts. So, you know, keep doing that. And uh, we hope to see you there. All right. We have finally made it to wrap up the last module in Fundamentals and Concepts. So this one's a lot of fun. We get to do some Python on the mainframe. Uh, so let's get started. Um, it's going to be a mix of like Unix system services stuff and then Python. So and interacting directly with like the mainframe. We get to see what we've done uh, through the Zoe Explorer. So let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, I want everybody to check if they still have their uh, JCL3 out data set from the JCL modules. So let's go into here and um, we're gonna do the high level query of our data sets and then the public data sets. So. As that loads, um, all right. So, um, if you guys have it, it will be right below the .jcl. But if you don't have it, it won't be there. And clearly, I don't have it. So, all we're gonna do is create another one. So, create new data set, and we'll do. Um, make sure it's your starts with your user ID .jcl3 out. Okay, and then we'll just do a sequential data set. So, allocate it. No need to change any other settings. Um, all right, now that we have it, our next step is going to be to um, get into the mainframe over through USS. So we're going to SSH into there right now, um, like this. And then the address is uh, right here, 204.90.115.200. So let's get in there. And then we're going to have to enter our password. All right, so now that, now that we're in here, we're actually going to execute a command. And this command is gonna allow us to uh, actually put something directly into our JCL3 out uh, data set. So all we're gonna put is this line goes at the bottom. Make sure that you guys do it exactly as you see it on the screen. And then we're gonna uh, specify where we want it to go. So in single brackets, we'll do 43147, this is my user ID, dot JCL3 out. Oh, and don't forget to close your uh, quotations. So, all right, so this command is executed. This is a good example of what we're gonna be doing in a, on a smaller scale. It's like uh, talking directly to our data sets through USS and we can see it if we open up JCL3 out. And if you guys don't see it um, and you've ran, run this command, just please do pull from mainframe. And you can see uh, it says this line goes up bottom. It was initially empty because I just created it. So. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, so yeah, it, it really is just an example of integrating uh, shell into ZOS, and now we're actually gonna do a more uh, practical example. So let's get into that. So make sure that you have a copy of dslist.python in your USS home directory. So we're gonna do our filter here, open it up. We can also ls and find um, dslist right here. All right, so let's just open data set list and we can see that we have, um, we're importing up here this uh, library. It's by IBM and it allows Python scripts to interact with the mainframe. And we're importing the module data sets from it. Uh, you can see here we're using the list members function, which if you check the documentation, which you can find in Explorer on step four of wrap up P PDF, um, you can check all the other stuff that you can do with it and you know experiment with it on your own time. Uh, but yeah, you can see here, it, it's also iterating through uh, however many members there are, and it's printing out uh, each member. So you can see that there's not an actual user ID, so we need to fill this in for the script to actually work. So let's fill it in with our user ID, and we'll go ahead and run it. So Python 3 dataset list, dslist.python. All right, so we have our three JCL datasets here. 
and um, if we check our JCL folder we can see we have all three of those data sets here and you know it was just this simple command and all we had to do was print it out alright so next we're gonna go ahead and open up our members.python file which is in the same directory and now we get to see how useful the Python scripts can be with uh, manipulating the mainframe so let's head right into members and we can see we've got a bit of a longer script so I just want to go over uh, roughly what this does and um, so on line three we're importing more than just the data sets module we're importing jobs and Z system and you guys can read up on these if you'd like uh, we'll be incorporating some of it some of this uh, in this example and then line six to eighteen here you can see we asked them for the sequential data set name first we're checking if it exists and if it's found then we can use it for the rest of our code otherwise we ask them if they want to create a new data set and if they say yes then we create it with the data set name that we have assigned up here and then type we don't know that yet we're gonna do that primary space and secondary space we've, we're already specifying and if they say no we're just gonna say well we can't continue unless you give us a data set so yeah alright so let's get on to what you guys have to do since this is the wrap-up module I think it's only right uh, I will be taking this up but if you guys pause the video here I think you guys would benefit from uh, trying to figure these four steps out on your own it's a lot of fun just open up this, uh, this documentation right here and once you have that open you'll be able to understand more about you know the how this um, Python library works so pause it here but I'm gonna get into the solution now so first step we want to figure out how to create this uh, as a sequential data set okay so there's one small error that prevents this from, ha from happening um, well if we look here we can see that the type is the question mark question mark question mark right that can't be right so let's check how we can create it as a sequential data set so let's go to modules and then let's check what we're using we're using data sets to create this right so we'll go to data sets as the module and then what we're looking for is um, datasets.create so let's just do a control F for that and we can see we can see all the arguments it takes so name okay we have that type is what we're looking for options okay let's see this is sequential right SEQ so that's got to be the answer for that one so let's do that all right what's the next step um, on lines 24 to 27 figure out which is the correct line to uncomment to output the data to a linked list based on the Z system section of documentation so they're talking about right here we have these four lines and um, we want to figure out what the correct one is to output a linked list of the data sets that we're qu qu querying for so let's take a look here what it's using as the module it's using Z system for all four of these so let's go ahead and take a look at that so if we go back up to modules we can see on the side we have Z system and then what we're looking for here is um, something with link list so let's go ahead and type that in this is this is usually how I like to do it if I'm looking for something um, okay so we have a couple we have list list link list and find link list so let's check here okay there's no find link list so it has to be list link list right all right so if we see here we actually have two list link list right but where we're outputting it is using the um, the name link list underscore output right so it's gonna be this one because you know obviously if we wanted to use this one we would just change this to data but we're not or link list data but we're not gonna do that we're just gonna use this one so um, yeah this just prints the the, uh, the value of link list underscore output alright we're on our last step now right so once you once you're confident in the line you've uncommented take a look at the data sets dot right line and based on the documentation for data sets find the issue here alright so this is our last step guys so let's check here um, we can see we have data sets dot right so we know we're, what which module we're gonna be looking at in data sets um, and we're looking for dot right so I'm gonna type dot right control F and let's see how the parameters work so there okay there's only three parameters and then one other optional parameter so we have data set the data set we want to write the content to the content uh, the string that we are actually writing so the actual content that we want in the data set and append mode so if we say true it adds it to the end of the data set if we say false it will overwrite the data set so let's check if our thing matches up with this so I can see the issue here the issue is that as you can see it's supposed to start with the data set name but it starts with linked list output so let's go DS name and then there 
we can see that now we actually have content, which is the linked list output that we've uncommented, the data set name, which is the thing that we specified here, uh, up here, and then we used, we actually made it by creating it sequentially. And uh, now that we've done all of these steps, let's go back and see what the next step is. So it's actually to, oh, okay, so we need to um, now run the script and see what we get, see if we get what we should be getting. So if we go into the explore sides here, we can see use uh, complete as a sequential data set name when prompted. So it's going to be our, our Z user ID dot complete. All right, so let's run it, Python 3, members dot Python py, and let's enter the sequential data set name. So let's put our, our Z user ID. Notice how it, it doesn't matter if I if I do lowercase Z because up here it um replaces it it uh, converts everything to uppercase just because that's the naming convention on the mainframe. So let's go ahead and press enter. And this does not exist yet, right? So all right, there we go. So should we create it? Certainly we shall. So type Y, and now that we are creating it. You can see this is what is currently executing. Um, so we're creating a, a, a data set with the data set name we gave it. You can see it was printed here. Sequential data set with the primary space and secondary space set. There are other settings that get filled by default, but if you guys want to see all those settings um, that you can that you can use to uh, create the data set, you can check the data sets documentation. Okay, so the code isn't done yet. Oh, there, it just finished. But um, so you can see, it printed all this stuff out. What is this? Well, you can see down here, once we get the linked list of all of the data sets, um, zsystem.linkedList, um, what we're doing is we're converting it to string and we're um, every time that there's a uh, comma, which is how they're separated initially, we're adding a new line just so it's easier to read and we're printing it out. This print statement is, is what happened. And you, if you guys noticed for a second there, it had all this printed out, but it was still going. That's because it was doing the data set start right, right? So we have data set name and it's writing all the linked list output. And we have append equals false, which means that um, it overwrites whatever's in there, right? If we already had something in there, um, it, it would just get rid of it and, and add new stuff. If we wanted to keep stuff in there and put this to the bottom, we would just do true. But let's keep it on false. Um, all right. So now for the big reveal, do we have complete? Let's go ahead and refresh our data sets oh I see something changed there we go complete oh and it's exactly what we wanted so we wanted the linked list output in there perfect um, exactly what we expected and now we get to do the best part of all these modules um, submitting the JCL so you're done fundamentals that's incredible but we need to actually make sure that you're actually done okay so don't don't get too excited um, so let's go to public.jcl and do uh, check auto. So we'll submit this job and then we will check it here. And if you guys know, okay, there we go. We got return code zero. If you get anything other than return code zero, you did unfortunately mess up somewhere. Um, this is what they're checking. They're checking for the complete. So make sure that you have the right script that creates the right complete. And you guys should know the drill at this point, but if you don't, we go um, take you for to the wrap-up challenge, PDF. And you can see it opens the PDF. Um, and then we're gonna check our JCL submissions. So this, it won't actually say that you've done it unless you get return code zero, but we did. So let's go ahead and submit it. And sometimes it takes a few seconds. All right. So you can see that we have unlocked our, uh, we've completed the wrap up and we have unlocked our fundamentals badge. All right, so you guys don't yet get the actual certification. Um, all you have to do is complete t at least two of these uh, concepts ones, which they're not actually coding. Um, if we go in here, security and privacy is one of them. So it's basically just uh, reading some stuff that they've written and um, it's just it's just stuff that's more about uh, the concepts behind um, working on mainframes, what mainframe is, and you know outside of the technology realm, and um, you just answer these quizzes. So I'm not going to give you guys the answers for these because it only takes like all you have to do is two, and each one takes like ten minutes. So you guys are well on your way to being a mainframe legend. All you need now is um, go ahead and and do the advanced. We might be making videos on those too, not yet, but um. Yeah, it's been fun. I'm glad 
that um, you have joined me for this journey. And um, once again, if you wanted to do it in person at the workshops, we're sorry. The client was down. But um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, we'll see you next time on WCS YouTube channel. We might be, uh, we have some crazy stuff in the works. Stay tuned for the Toronto Tech Expo. But uh, yeah, other than that, we're done. So good luck with the two concepts and uh, have fun.